Yeah, we're gonna go up that way though. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna make a right, and you'll see it. Okay. It's like the next intersection. All right. So you guys driving? Oh yeah. All right. So go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Burn. Let's go. Yeah. Isn't Chuck's blind something over there? One, two, three. Yeah. Can you hear me? One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, got it. Good. Yeah. <sighs> My cell phone number? No. 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 I swear to you, no. I'm getting fucking prank call, phone calls and other people calling me. 416-799. 799. Don't call private or I'm going to cuss. Yeah, don't call Saturday, private. Don't hood. call You're private. Call private. Up, top, At all. up top, driftwood. And what are you doing here today? No, oh, just no make sure because I'm not answering burn. private phone calls. Fuck that shit. No idea what he's doing. There's somebody else mm -hmm. here. No, I didn't say it was him. I'm saying, yo, no, no, I'm no, getting no. private phone calls left, right, and center. Saturday, I don't want to, you know? know? In the hood, you got to wear those bulletproof vests. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't want to get touched. <laughs> Stay up. Okay? Nigga, I don't know. I don't know who got you. I don't know who robbed you. I don't know who popped you. He is home. I'm saying his bitch is there. Oh, because his mom's probably driving it. His bitch is home. I didn't even fucking talk to that guy. Fucking yeah, but you know his back room? She sent me, she tried to look, hook me up with a friend, right? Oh, that yeah, she said yeah, was her yeah. cousin? Yeah, yeah. And I fought the girl the same day at the back room and tell me why she watching me fuck her friend. Yeah, right. Mm. I swear to you, she was watching me fuck her friend. Like, I was getting uncomfortable still because my, my ass was showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like walking, I was like, yo, what are you watching she's me watching? for? Yeah, she's watching me. Like, she just there because she, I guess like she couldn't. from the front? Yeah, where, oh, where the right. fucking yeah, computer yeah. was. But I'm like, yo, all these girls are scallywags. Because I'm like, yo, if your friend's willing to fuck me yeah, yeah. while everybody's watching and then you're watching yeah, me, you're fucking scally. So you're like kind of like a porno star. Who, me? In a way. Kind of. Some, somewhat. Yo, Hello? Yo, yo, you let these guys walk around by yo, it's 416. You're gonna get shot, you know. 416, 799. You're gonna get shot. Then we can film it. Yeah. Can you not hear me? Why is this phone so like shit? I might run over it when I buy a new one. Hello? Hello? Hit it. No, it's gone. Guy hanged up, dude. Scotia, he hanged up. Go to menu, call log, and receive calls. Oh man, it's freezing out here. Why is it so cold? Cold. I'm this shit. Up, Say money bring power, yeah, power you, bring last. Niggas I, I bring shoot, shoot, shoot brings ass. Yo, yeah, I'm coming right now. I'm putting down my jacket. Oh, I don't want to get my fingers in there. I'm like Mars. TV Ontario, okay. The fifth, okay, yeah. Uh, tomorrow morning would be good stuff. Yeah, because right now I'm in the middle of something. Uh, hey, this, this number right here. This number right here that you're calling right now. What time, uh, what time oh, are you going to call those so I can, you know? No, they're not, they're not doing it right there. Paul's just grabbing 10 a.m.? He didn't catch you. Yeah, driving. okay. All right then. Okay, no problem. Bye. Just remember to blur at the door, remember? Yeah, we in the hood right now. You know how no, we do. Don't talk to me, remember? That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about myself. They're, they're calling you, eh? Not my... Alright, close up time. Alright, dudes. Alright, you don't have to like... Holy shit. What are trying to clear? Hello, bub. Oh I, oh, I have it on too. We're going to do the interview here okay. with both at the same time. Okay. So we're going to put uh, mics on, on both. Okay. 
and um, we're just gonna do it loose. I mean, uh, the camera isn't gonna be on the tripod, and uh, we'll just talk. And uh, you're all wired all over the place. Can you okay. run that up? Do you, can you run that up inside your shirt? No, he's our, he already has a mic on. Yeah, huh? that's our mic. What? Where? There's the hat. It's right there. All right. I know. <laughs> I oh, found I it. No, I found it in their car, and then I put it back on. It was in their back. And uh, he put that on the belt or something. Great. So, Brian, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And uh, put your punch. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, Everybody can catch me. Two. Why? <laughs> they like you. I only have one wireless mic and four cylinders. So okay. Do you are? No problem. We're tied, we're tied together here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So do you want to keep your jacket That's open? Or and uh, yeah, this one. C U H. Can you run that yeah, one yeah. up the inside? I mean, okay. one of my things. C H U C K E Y. I mean, I E. I E. What's wrong with you? Okay. Chucky Atkins. Yeah. Chuck. Last name. That's all right. For him, yeah. Atkins. A T. A T. K. K. E N. Um, Z at N. C U C H U C K I E. What we're trying to do is this is going to be on uh, if you get to tomorrow bogey? night. Tomorrow night? It'll be on tomorrow night. Okay. And uh, the reason why it's going to be tomorrow is because all the uh, you know the federal government and the city all their government bullshit. are all getting yeah. together to talk, right? So what we're going to do is um, we're doing a story about that, but we also wanted to hear from you know people. Real who, people may know a little bit about, about the whole scene to, to tell us how effective uh, any government measures might be. True, true, true. Is this guy making love on my phone? Hmm? Does anybody know? Yeah. yeah, if he's making yeah. love on the phone. Is it costing you a lot of minutes? No, 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 no. It's free right now, oh, still. Okay, okay. Well, oh, yeah. you're just doing business. Yeah. No, I didn't, no, no, no. I just want to know if he's making love on the phone so you can answer my, my fucking, my other calls that's coming in. Uh oh, we're gonna get shot. Oh, everybody, you see, you see? That's that's the prank, yo. It's the prank. <laughs> we do that way. We do that to almost every cameraman that comes around. Oh my god. You just stuck um, down and shit? We are joking. I'm wearing a vest. You serious? Well, I, I'm just told, kidding. Oh, 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 <laughs> I, I told you that. Yo, it would be, be believable. I wouldn't even, would even think you're lying still. With the amount of things that I see, remember, yo, I forgot who came, which one of the news people that came, and then I was playing around with a laser pointer. Remember, and that lady got scared? Yo, you're. Things like dragging on the ground. Yeah, uh, yeah it's not worth it. Oh, okay. okay, so where do you want us? Uh, put you, put the, actually, you'll put you here on this side. Mm -hmm. That's it. And you can come up and stand beside Chuck. He has a wire. <laughs> yeah, he does. So. I feel like maybe the chill is on the wire for this. It might be on the outside, so I should be on the outside of this wire. Uh, I can move around. That way? way? Actually, yeah, I'll put you on this side, Scott, then they are on the other side. Okay, so we'll probably want you to stay as close together as, as possible. Okay. And, uh, you know, the, forget about the camera. <coughs> not that Lucien's not a good guy, but for, no, pretend he's not a good guy. <laughs> I know, it's we'll trying to do it fast. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's chilly out here. I'm nice yeah. stuff. You guys gotta wear, like, layers, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, there's stuff. Okay, so they're having this meeting tomorrow. Um, what do you think of, of something like that? Uh, they're trying to solve what they consider a very bad problem, and yet you've had people uh, shot on Young Street now, innocent people. Well, what do you guys think of that? Well, I'm not racist still, but personally, if you look at it in the homicides that happened, uh, the good majority of the people that died was black people, you know what I'm saying? Like black actual males and black. They never really made a big commotion out of that until it started getting close to their areas, and I guess because, I, I, like, rest in peace, I don't know the girl still, but honestly, she, I don't believe that she should have got hit by a bullet. Just like nobody else should get hit by a bullet, but they only made it a big media thing until a white girl got hit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not. There's no race between. I live in a in a in an area that's multicultural. You know what I'm saying? There's Asians, there's Somalians, there's Africans, there's black, there's everything that's here. White people, Italian, they live their life. We're comfortable. You know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter is, you don't care what's going on in the hood because it went to a more civilized area where you never thought it would happen. Is when you guys want to do something like it's not going to stop it. Paul Martin says he wants to pull a, a ban on guns. You, why didn't she say he wants to put a stop on poverty? Why aren't there certain places that they don't have good community centers? They don't have a place to chill at when it's after school. Like, you're not stopping main issues. There's kids that don't even go to school. 
So where are their time focused to, other than the streets? You know what I'm saying? Gang banging. Like, you ain't saying, oh, I want to put a stop to that. But you're saying, you're going to stop handguns. So it's going to stop a man from rolling around with a shotgun or an M16. Something higher than, you know what I'm saying, than a handgun. Like, they're only mad because it's coming close to home and they're realizing that the guys who are shooting nowadays are rootless. They don't care. They're just out to kill. So, Chucky, the, you know, all the politicians are saying there's a problem with guns. Yeah. How easy is it to get guns? It's easy. That's just all I could say. You know what I mean? He's banning handguns. I thought handguns, handgun laws in Canada are already like super strict. You know what I mean? It's already that hard to get a gun. So what's the point of banning handguns? You know I mean they're already pretty much banned? You know what I mean? Actually, <laughs> so it's not stopping people from getting guns. You know what I mean? Well, what about the whole? Get- I gotta fix Chuck's Oh, okay. So, it's that was okay. I mean, what are the gangs? What do they do? What do they give the people who are members of the gang? Honestly, gangs, like, all right, the terminology of gangs, you guys are going to understand. Everything is a gang. If you're in a group and you chill together and me and you are friends or whatever, that's a gang. Police officers is the biggest gang. Police and the law and the government is the biggest gang in the world because they roll in an operation. And their operation is to take down and knock any other hustles. That's their hustle. To knock anybody else's hustle. They're the biggest gangs. They're allowed to have guns. They're allowed to shoot with reason. They're allowed to use a, their, any force that they want against anybody that they want. So, like, they're the gangs. When you really look at it, every hood is going to be a gang if you look at it. Whether it's not even blood or crypture, it's like you live in a hood, they define you into a one place in a one area. You're going to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a matter of a name or a rep. Like, if me and a whole bunch of friends chill together, that's a clip. That's automatically a gang automatically because you're gonna say oh there's a gang of people over there there's a group of people over there that's a gang you know what i'm saying like you have to use the terminology of the gang we do not glorify what we use as a gang we don't say hey we're the toronto police from 31 division you know what i'm saying that's a gang because you like you have a name right there framed for you you have an outline and you have a uniform that portrays the name that you guys are following you know what i'm saying what about the whole idea that gangs are on the street and they're shooting on on you know on the street in broad daylight so, same with police officers. Police officers do the same thing too, you know what I'm saying? Like the fact of the matter is, we don't own gun stores. The hood don't own gun stores. We don't make guns, you know what I'm saying? The guns don't get manufactured to us, you know what I'm saying? Like you guys understand, we don't have a Smith & Wesson company. We don't make Uzis. We don't do all of this, like you know what I'm saying? The one thing that I don't understand about politicians and officers, they say that it's a bad thing, but they wouldn't be here if it wasn't for us. They wouldn't make money and there wouldn't be no media attention on them if there wasn't nothing going on. They, they feed off of our crime rate. They feed off of everything that happens, whether it's good or bad, you know what I'm saying? So like when I hear them talk about, oh, we need to stop this. Yeah, it needs to stop still because honestly, I think that with all the shootings that's going on, a man shouldn't even be shooting the next man. If anything, shoot after officers. They don't want to knock down everybody's hustle and don't give a crap who you are, whether you're black or white. You know what I'm saying? I see white guys get arrested. I see Chinese guys get arrested. I can see black people get arrested. But it's officers, you know what I'm saying? I think the gun violence should stop. Stop. I'm not being a hypocrite because I know how hard it is in the streets and I know certain things always happen for a reason. But the fact of the matter is, police officers do twice as worse. They need us. They need our crime rate to make dollars. They need it. And they tell us straight when they come down here after they see a homicide. We don't give a fuck. We make money off you guys anyways. Like, come on. How hard is it for young people in whatever neighborhood to, to stay away from the attraction of the streets? Well, think about this, when you come from an area that's filled with poverty, you come from a broken home, you know what I mean? You hardly interact with your own family at home, you know what I mean? Who, who are you going to go to in, to interact with, you know what I mean? Like, I, I grew up without a father, you know what I mean? So, people that were older on the streets were, you know what I mean? They, they raised me, basically, you know what I mean? They showed me love. Took you in. And obviously, I'm going to look up to them, you know what I mean? And that's what it is. And were you both involved in... It? What, they, what the police call street gangs? Were you both involved in that? I'm, I'm what police officers call a career criminal, regardless of the circumstances. I could just be walking on the street and hey, I, you know what it is? When you're on the streets, you're not even much of a gang member. You're not even a gang banger. You're a liability. You're a liability of anything. Police officers don't even have to have a reason to pull you over here. To what they say is, we consider you guys liabilities. Yeah, you might be walking now. You might not have a gun in your pocket. But two minutes later, you might have something. They don't know it for sure, but that's what they assume. They don't come up to a guy for a reason and say, hey, we're going to pull you over because we got a phone call that you might be suspicious. You're walking on the street. 
I'm going to pull you over. They did that. They do that to everybody, like every single day, every single time. Like you're a liability in a hood like this. So, you know what I'm saying? But aside from that, what, what, what do you guys do or what can you do to prevent your little brother or your little cousin from getting involved in this? Well, like I said, all my little cousins and siblings and every little person that's around me know that I've been into situations with police officers and been kicked out of school so I can't go to any school in Toronto. And I'm pretty sure I always tell my little bro and my little sister to stay in school because believe me, if you want to be a garbage man, you need a diploma. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, school, you need that. And honestly, what I look at it, like, the government knows that you need all of that, and they use it as a leverage. You know what I'm saying? They use it as, like, boom, this is the string that we have on this person. If you don't have school, you don't got nothing. If they really cared about it, they would say, yo, I want more people to chill in school. I want more people to, you know, live proper. I want these guys to do it. Like, they don't care. Like, if you kick a person out at 14 years old, out of school, all schools in Toronto, what do you want them to be? If you know that you can't get a high-priced jobs without a high school diploma, what do you want him to be? A criminal. Have, have you guys ever been arrested? Oh, of course. Numerous times, man. Ask any Numerous. police officer who I am or who this guy is. They know me. They shot down my bro. They know my history. They know everything. What, what have they arrested you for, Chuck? Uh, what have you been charged Well, mostly weapons possession, illegal gun possession, and uh, recently narcotics. So, yeah. So, any time did they... No, I, I spent like three days, four days, that's it. But this guy, this guy right here spent six months. So yes. one, of, one, of the, one of the things that they're, they're considering is that if anybody, you know, it's one of the new things they're talking about. Anybody has a gun, is arrested for, you know, using a gun or being involved in any sort of gun crime, it's going to be tougher to get bail. Is that a deterrent? It's been that way from time. Yeah. It's been that way from time. It's just, they don't understand the whole process of everything. Like, really and truly, they, the reason why they're toughening now because they let all the wrong people out, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you got a guy that went down and he gunned down a person in broad daylight, you're not gonna wanna give him bail. But yeah, you're gonna give a guy who fucking, who's been out there, who had a gun on him, got tackled by an officer, seen, fighting an officer with a machine, you're gonna let him go. Like, honestly, like, stuff like that, you gotta look at it like this. You as a man, or anybody, a judge as a man, should be at the level to say, okay, this guy here for a violent gun crime, Ray, 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 Ray. You don't check his history and know where he's coming from. How can you judge him? And then you want to bail him, and then if he does something like wrong, whatever, whatever, you want to blame him and make it look like he's a menace to society. Yo, we live in a hood. You guys forget, by the end of the day, when all you guys go to sleep in your nice, cozy beds, we're in the same area where gunshots every day. You know my options when I wake up in the morning? That I could either die or I can either go to jail. For what reason, you don't know, but that's the life. You know what I'm saying? You keep it like that. That's the mentality you keep, and you try to wise and better from that. The people around here who, who have seen you know, the problems going on for years, do, do they want, do they look at things as being short-term solutions or long-term solutions? And what do you think those There's no solutions. Are? There's no solutions. I'm just trying to get by day by day. It's not even thinking about a week from now. I mean, it's how I'm going to see tomorrow. You know what I mean? And it, it's, it's messed up, but that's the mentality that, that it is. You know what I mean? Does it make it better if, if they put more cops, if they make it tough to get bail, if they try to prevent okay. people from joining gangs? You see what I don't understand? This is what I'm going to tell you, okay? Because I spent time in jail. So it's not even like I'm one of those people that know about crime and like never spend a day in jail. Like honestly, half of the shootings and beef that goes on is from such an incident that happened in jail. You know what I'm saying? They cage, you, they cage the criminals like animals. They put you two to a cell. And they don't care where you're from, they don't care what hood you're from, they don't care, you're just a number in there. So the fact of the matter is, I'm meeting somebody that I don't know. Me and him's gonna kick off inside the bing. We don't, nothing settles within there. Unless you're either dead or you got rushed. I'm gonna hold that to feelings and I'm gonna say, hey, so then if I walk now and I see that guy in the street, that's gonna be problems. Gonna say, hey, that guy kicked my ass in the bing. And that's like, you guys put people in jail, but it's like, you don't put the people who need to do the time from the people who don't. Like, you know what I'm saying? And regardless of the circumstances, I would even wish jail on my enemy. I would not even wish anybody to go to jail. Nobody, honestly, except rapists and kidnappers who kidnap children and shit. They should go to jail. But other than that, nobody should go to jail because that's a bad place to be. It changes up your whole mind frame. Like, I think if you get arrested, the person's not going to want to come out rehabilitated and say, hey, I never want to do this again. He's going to be fucking goddamn pissed. He's going to be mad. He's going to want to do something back. He's going to want to cause more crimes. He's going, to, he's going to want to make sure that, hey, I don't go in for no soft stuff. I want to go in for something big. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's where it starts, from jail. Like, jail starts the, the whole, like, process of crime. Because once they process you and you get arrested the first time and they have you in the asshole book, that's it. All they have to do is just run upon you every day. 
check your conditions and arrest you. So you guys have done prison like some time. I did not. I did time. Okay. So what are you guys doing now to, to turn things around? How have you tried to move things forward? Hey, like in I, your lives personally. Well, like I said, I did a lot of other time. I did a lot of time. And I lost a lot of people that was close to me, whether family members and close friends and stuff. So the best thing to do on the street is like make your money, keep out of the streets eye, and like just don't be around in situations where it's just bad. You know what I'm saying? Like honestly, keep yourself off the streets. The streets ain't a safe place for anybody to really walk at night. Like, but I, regardless of your rep or whatever, like keep yourself productive. Keep things like like try to be there for your for your your siblings spend more time with your family members do something productive with your life i make music you know what i'm saying i make music and i i love music see because if it wasn't for music and i think honestly i'd be doing way more worse than i'm doing right now you know what i'm saying yeah. so like music is like a focus if you have a focus a grind something that you're good at focus it. if you're a basketball player play ball if you're a baseball player play baseball if you rap then rap all day and make sure that you rap. If you're a drawer, then be an artist. You know what I'm saying? And draw. All they keep your focus. Go, what have you been up to? All it is is I'm trying to just help out. You know what I mean? Like, I want to make this community a better place. You know what I mean? And it, it can only happen with learning from your mistakes. You know what I mean? Like, people people that have been through whatever, whatever, and they really want to make a change, then all you have to do is know that all these little kids that are looking up to you, you tell them, you know what I mean? Tell them to stay out of it. Because who are kids going to look up and listen to more? People who have actually been through it, or people who are, you know, don't know anything about and just come down and say, hey, stay in school, stay on the drugs. You know what I mean? When kids, kids know that we're people that are in the neighborhood, you know, and we've been through the struggle and we're saying, you know, make yourselves better, do this and that, mm -hmm. kids will listen more, you know what I mean? And hopefully that, that's a, a change. And parents nowadays need to be more understanding. Like, you can't really, like, break balls and say hey you got to behave yourself like it's easier said than done like you live in a community no matter what you dress or no matter how you are you're still gonna get victimized you're still gonna get pulled over hey so All you right, know so we're, we're gonna get to, i need you guys to stay right here because uh, lucien is gonna get some some shots it's yeah. more for uh, the images okay. oh right now jante yeah, okay, you go back to school or? Yeah, I'm hello moms back i'm back in school and i'm but i'm in a lot of community <laughs> programs and like him up so, and, and you can't, you can't get back in this school. Any oh, yeah. school in Toronto. I've been trying for like four years oh, why, since they kicked me out at grade and nine. How old are you guys? For me, for I'm 18 right. and he's 19, so, you know. And you're back in school. How's it going? I've been going? expelled twice. I'm, I'm doing good though. I'm doing good. Fine. That's good. Getting my, my life around. Solid, yeah. Oh, you're right. That's what well, I was talking about. When was, oh, the, the, when was the first time that, that you were arrested? Oh, when I was oh. 13. So how 13. Are you gonna 13. My mom called the police officers to talk to me. I don't even know what oh. report they claim that they rigged up. Oh, yeah. and they said that it was a offense that I could be charged on, and that was it. I got arrested, and then ever since oh, I got arrested at the age of 13, I haven't stopped getting arrested until Good like for, for now. Useful. This but has actually been a year. So you were at home, or what? At home when I got arrested? Yeah. I was chilling at home. Me and my mom got into a little argument, and she obviously thought that police officers would be the best thing to do, mm -hmm. and to talk to me. She, to what she said, she called in to talk to me. And what they ended up doing was arresting me and made me spend like a couple of days in jail. And then I, after a, a while, couple a couple of jail. And that was my first offense. Like I never had no offenses. You know what I'm saying? I haven't been arrested for nothing. Like I spent a couple of days. And then the funniest thing is, is when I had, when my part of my bail conditions was not to be around my family members because they were the ones that they said that the police officers pressed charges. Like the pre they said that they pressed charges against me, my own family members. So I had to stay with my godmom for like a little bit. And after a while, that's when my name got processed in the system. They started knowing me. When they pulled me over, they didn't even have to ask me my name or my address. They knew it automatically. They're just like, hey, what's your conditions? If I had conditions, then they'll lock me up on that. I even had police officers coming to my house or my areas just to see what I'm doing, just to check up and stuff. And you're looking at them like, isn't this harassment? Like, you know, aren't you supposed to be here for a probable cause? And you were, you were living at home at the time or you were with your... I was living at home at the time. I had to live with my godmother because of that situation with the police officer. And ever since then, I never, ever stopped. Like, I never, ever not get harassed by police officers. Your first arrest was what? Like, what, what happened? They said, they said I bring a gun to school. And then they raided my house. And they found one. But it was an illegal, it was an illegal search. So, you know, it was perfect. Straight up. Yeah, but it's... But, like... What I grew up with, I grew up with everybody having like love for each other. Now it's just like everybody's out for themselves, and it doesn't take much for a person to die. You know what I'm saying? Like it could be a gambling game, it could be anything, a little dispute. And that's why I say like, 
Like, you shouldn't really want to go and hurt somebody that you guys grew up with as a person in school. We went to school together. Like, honestly, if you honestly have hatred for a person, I have hatred for a person that has no love for anybody other than themselves, and that's the police officers. Because honestly, they make in, their income is off of us, regardless of what we do. You know what I'm saying? And the fact of the matter is, their hustle is to knock our hustle. They don't care whether we eat, sleep, breathe, or die. You know what I'm saying? So the fact of the matter is, I don't think that black on black should start shooting black. Black people should shoot black people. I don't think white people shoot white people. I don't think anybody should shoot anybody. But if anything, go after cops. They're the main people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Half of these gangsters out here that say that they're tough and they glorify themselves as gangsters, they wouldn't go after a police officer. They wouldn't express this stuff to a police officer with, or fight them. With all this talk about, you know, the recent shooting and now the politicians are involved because there's an election, do you think that they're going to do something that's going to turn into results? They just want to do it for the votes. That's the fact of the matter is the votes. Like, you know? He says they're going to do something more, right? We're like, you know what I'm saying? Of the community. Oh, let's vote for that guy. Yeah. When he's voted? What is he going to do? Nothing, you know? This, this fence has been here for what, 100 years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like, exactly with the, the whole, like, circumstances of everything is just like, I just look at it like this. Anything can happen out here. The politicians, like, Paul Martin wants to put a ban on guns, right? That's not going to change anything. They're going to get hands on bigger things and better things. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you change poverty? Why don't you, like, honestly, this You're whole neighborhood, this whole neighborhood had bars where we could all sit down and relax. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't have to go out there. We didn't have to go out and chill. They took it out because they didn't want a group of guys to chill and relax together as one. There was no problems. There was no neighbors complaining, hey, there's a little absent. Yeah, you, yeah, it might get a little loud in the night times because, hey, we're boys. Boys just want to have fun, you know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter is, if you can't chill in your own neighborhood, yeah. where do you want us to go? Safe. You should see what they're doing on the south side right here. They're, bu they're, building, they're building jail, fences, like they're building fences that look like jail. See the lights, the stadium lights, you know how bright they are. At nighttime, they're bright. You like honestly, everything. when I look at this, when I see their bar up areas and stuff, it's like, it's confinement. It's like jail. It's like you're saying, okay, you guys are going to stay. That's when gangs get created because they're like, okay, you can't chill in your own. You, they're defining to your one area. They don't want you to expand to another area. You know what I'm saying? They borrow out one place because they say too much people trespass one area. You know what I'm saying? You know why they're cut off? So that cops can drive by and see what's going on. Yep. They say that the kids are dying. That's the reason for cutting off the Nope. No dying, y'all. They're all cut off. They just want to see through here. Soon, look at it. They had like they have seven cameras on that building alone. If you look at that camera, if you look up there and you get a view, all around that building is cameras. With all the shit that ha been going on in this area. How comes one camera couldn't see something? And they, they, like, they take taxpayers' money for all of this. They want routine patrols. They want cameras in every hood and stuff. But what is that going to do? That's not preventing nothing. Really, that's not preventing nothing at the time of the place. Like, they say, oh, we have MTHA over here. What the fuck is MTHA, really? We don't see them doing nothing. They come after the fucking yeah. shooting happens. And then, they just, happens. and then they just pulls up with police happens. officers, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not really nothing. We're going to need some shots of you guys so that I can introduce you. But okay, without, yeah. Ooh, probably yeah. without me and me. Yeah. See, I in the building. Did you wear it today for a purpose? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be warmer now because you'll be moving. <laughs> without me. Yeah, I gave him our shirts. Rich friend. You cross the bridge? Any more cigarettes? No? Which? Driftwood Bridge, look it up. It's okay. There. Andre Burnett. No, I just read about your brother actually. They had a two page article about him on Saturday. I heard. Film the bullet holes. <laughs> right. Are there bullet holes um, on the bridge? No, bullet holes over there at the plaza though. Where is that? Right. See that right there? Where am I? Where am I? My brother. Yeah. Oh, that's a Bible, man. Thirteen year old. You gotta keep that on you all the time, you know? At uh, all times. All gotta get a shot of that. I'll get Luciana yeah. mention that. I have one of those. 23 gunshots. Yeah, man, a small, you know, a small little handheld Bible. If you need a little God in your life, you don't need to go to church to go, you know, find God. Just pray and, you know, read your little Bible and you do fine. Uh, I want you to get a shot of this. It doesn't have to be now, but maybe after they come across the bridge that he had in his pocket. Oh, shit. Go here. Two cents. Huh? Fly. Gotta have your thing, you know, individual. Holy fuck! Like saving time. Oh, really? 90 days. The days are getting longer. Yeah. Days are more colder nowadays, though. Very and cold. nights are shorter.
Just looking at my hand. Okay. In the building. Look at it. Oh, okay. Alright, thanks. <laughs> They are. Just zoom all the way out. Just hold inside it. Yeah. Sorry, right, you don't have to come inside. They're scared. They probably think they're going to get mugged. <laughs> yeah. Uh, huh? Kind of. I'm just standing in the same spot for a minute. Yeah. I was impressed. Well, you, you don't even you just know what they're going to ask you. You just have to think about it. It's just like, yo, it's the truth. Why are you wearing a vest? Why not? Yo, the amount yeah. of people that's dying nowadays, yo, I soon buy one myself. Yeah, Holy fuck, it's freezing out here, guy. Nah. It's not like I wear it to, to be cool or nothing. No, I wear it under. No one even knows that I wear one. It's just for the fact of your safety, yo, your life and your well being. Yeah, you can still see the blood stains and shit too. Everything, everything that's orange is just blood stains. Hey, and don't look at the camera. Yo, I'm cold, guy. I can't continue with this no more. Hey, yo, Scotia, Scotia. How long is that? Yeah, yeah. The fact of the matter is, I think at least after she really get shot, bro. That's the only way things are stuck. You know what I'm saying? Yo, fuck those niggas, man. I don't care. I told you, ever since that shit happened, I don't give a fuck. Niggas better just know what they're talking about. I'm gonna go back and then go back and then go for me? Yeah. Oh, this you is our record. For that, we're not around. People say, well, no, this is my, Ill. this is my, is this is my record label, you know? This is, is the it? record label, Chronically Ill, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Exactly. We There's don't a really double meaning there, perhaps. Double meaning. Well, chronically ill is just a group of weed smokers that yeah. makes music. Yeah. That makes music for every eye, every race. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. For sure. Like I, I'm not one-sided. Cops give you a hassle for stuff like that. Cops don't. Wearing, cops don't. Man. Cops don't give us hassles for what we're wearing anymore. They just look for us for guns. I know a regiment who just got searched and he had drugs on him, like a big amount of drugs. Like, you know, they got a big lot of drugs and they